Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, California Weather Watch. Today is April 16th, and right now we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery. You can see we've got this upper level low right here. It doesn't show up that well on the satellite imagery, but you can see the mid and high level clouds. Get a spin of the atmosphere right off of Point Conception there. And so this is what is going to be with us here for the next couple of days. And it's going to phase in with this inside slider here that's been trending ever so slightly eastward with, it seems like, each uh, new incoming model run. So we'll look at those details coming up here. But we do have a pretty thick marine layer entrenched across Southern California that we have the potential for some thunderstorms here over the next few days as well. And some below normal temperatures across much of the state of California and a lot of the southwest as well. So we'll dive into those details as we go through the video here this morning. You can see the mid-level water vapor loop always shows these upper-level lows a bit better. And here comes that next polar lobe there, kind of swinging down across Alberta and portions of eastern BC. It's going to move down here and, again, trending a little bit eastward with some of these more recent model runs. But we got the upper-level low right off our coastline there. Uh, if we take a look at the visible satellite, you can kind of see <clears throat> doing this video a little bit earlier than normal here this morning, but you can see that marine layer well into the interior valleys there and up against some of the mountain ranges, you know, and it's going to be tough to break a lot of this up as we go through the day to day with this upper level low around. And that's going to kind of be a theme here over the next few days. But there is some thunderstorm potential for some of the higher terrain as well. Um, take a look at lightning strikes over the last 24 hours. We did have that round of thunderstorms models did a pretty good job on that here for some of the Sierra Nevada up towards the Cascade range. Some of the coastal areas too, again, across the higher terrain, a few lightning strikes across Nevada, Arizona, and Utah as well. So if we um, take a look here, this weather station has a lightning detection system with it. It's all solar powered. It's easy to set up. Great fun to have at your home and you can view it on your smartphone app no matter where you go It's always broadcasting live updates like every 2.5 seconds or 3 seconds I believe very fun weather station the smartphone app is great as well click on the link down below if you want to save 10% off on one So speaking of lightning you can see you got isolated thunderstorms coming up here as this is Wednesday through Wednesday evening That is for today So again across the higher terrain here and it could get out across some of the valley areas I'll show you the more on that here in a minute and Sacramento talking about this as well Sierra Nevada and Southern Cascades take shelter be careful out there if you see these clouds building the big dark bases out there avoid the water hopefully you're not out there on a boat when a thunderstorm is passing over top of you also wind advisory so some portions of California some blustery conditions nothing too crazy but you can see interstate 40 is right there there's uh, the 15 goes through Baker and Mountain Pass and out towards Barstow is where that wind advisory is some gusty winds to be had out there up towards 50 miles per hour now, if we take a look at what is going on at 18,000 feet, upper levels of the atmosphere, 500 millibars. You can see ridge here, sinking air, warm, less clouds, troughing here, upper level low. You got precipitation, you got convergence, and you've got cooler weather usually associated with the trough. Now, you put that into motion, and you can see that inside slider dropping down across Idaho there into Nevada. And again, if you've been watching over the last few days, it has been trending a bit eastward with that, what I like to call polar lobe, sets up shop there over the southwest USA, and slowly meanders off to the east. And then you see another slider kind of impacting the Pacific Northwest. And then who knows what's going to come after that. We start to flatten out this ridge here. We'll have to wait and see what this is going to show over the next few days. But also I wanted to show you the European model run as of last night. Verse is 24 hours previous. And I'll show you what's going on here. And this kind of leads me to what I wanted to bring up a little bit here. Upper level observations are so dang important. So that's why when we reduce the amount of these weather balloons, the radio sons that we put up in the atmosphere, we really can dramatic I shouldn't say dramatically but we can really impact the accuracy of our forecast and that can mean the difference between having a heads up on a flooding event and some thunderstorm activity or high winds and all kinds of stuff versus you know getting a pretty good you know some some pretty good heads up on an event like that so you know it, it matters to to the layperson out there to farmers and things like that so you know we're cutting back on observations that we're doing we should be increasing them and improving them so yeah there's my little rant here for the day but yeah you can kind of see how this upper level low is now a little bit off to the east versus what it was showing just uh, example for 24 hours ago you see the colder areas out across some of the valley areas and now it's kind of backed off on that a little bit there so yeah national weather service 
are those balloons, the radiosons that go up daily. When you cut those back, we reduce weather model accuracy and that affects our forecast. So put that into motion and you can kind of see that curling off to the east as we go through the upcoming weekend. Now take a look at two meter temperature anomaly. So yeah, you can kind of see that marine layer reflected across you know central and southern California over uh, the next, this is one day, about a, a one day two meter temperature anomaly. If I put that into motion, you can kind of see that running total there and you can see that polar lobe kind of dropping down across the southwest USA and it's going to keep some portions of California below normal, but we start to bounce back there. So there's that kind of mixed signal there as we go on in towards the weekend coming up. And then if we go off in towards next week, we do start to warm up a bit, but some of the coastal areas stay a little bit on the cool side. If we take a look at a uh, five-day running temperature anomaly, kind of a mixed bag again here across California. It looks something similar with the trough over the Intermountain West. So here we go today, daily two-meter maximum temperature here, Wednesday, April 16th. That is today. You can see the high temperatures out there into the maybe mid and upper 70s for some of the Sacramento Valley, of course, warmer across the deserts. And again, that marine layer is going to be hard to shake off today. Highs only getting into the mid-60s, probably for Los Angeles, San Diego. But if we go through tomorrow, you can kind of see see that marine layer holding on. There's Friday. Saturday start to warm up a bit here as that upper level low starts to move off to the east. And then we go through Sunday, Monday. You can see the warming trend as we go on into the following week. So we'll see how that turns out. You see the, the mid and upper 80s there return for a lot of the San Joaquin Valley and some of the valley areas here. Look at Death Valley maybe pushing the, uh, back up into the upper 90s as we go on in towards uh, Tuesday of next week. There's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Who knows what's going to happen after that. So looking at composite reflectivity. Again, we have thunderstorm potential today. We got this upper level low right off the coast and you can see kicking off a few showers with that. But as we go through the day today, uh, you know, I wanted to point this out. The Sierra Nevada, perhaps the Southern Sierra Nevada, and maybe even some of the Southern California higher terrain could get a thunderstorm or two. Better chance probably across the Sierra Nevada portions of Nevada. And then you kind of see the spinning in the atmosphere there. And we put that into motion. We go on in towards Thursday. And there comes that frontal system draped across Utah back towards Nevada. And this could be kicking off showers across California again on the day Thursday. You can't rule out some lightning strike activity with that as well. And you can see that kind of push down across Las Vegas and on into Arizona. You got to watch that out, especially across some of the park area and the canyons, national parks. If you, this band sets up and kind of stalls a little bit there, you got to watch for some localized flooding conditions with a feature like that. And you can kind of see the showers moving from northwest to south here across portions of Southern California by the time we go in towards Friday morning, which reminds me, I'm going to jump back here and we're going to do something else really quick. So I want to show you here this. We're going to take a look at thunderstorm uh, outlook here and you can see this is day one. I want to point at day two right there. So the, the st storm prediction center is kind of on top of that as well. Then you can see that kind of clip in portions of California as we go through day three, which would be uh, Friday morning through Saturday morning. So I did want to show that. So back to the forecast here, European shows something similar. I just want to run through this really quick. And again, maybe some higher elevation, you know, snowfall, a few inches, uh, some of that convective stuff. And then we go on through this weekend. You see the upper level low by the time we go to the day Friday. You can still get that thunderstorm threat on the day Friday, but you see the main bulk of that precipitation across Arizona, Utah, Colorado. Maybe this would be a nice snow producer here. A lot of these areas have been below normal, the snow water equivalent anyway, in the snowpack. So hopefully that can build up some of that here as we go on in towards the second half of May. And then what's going to happen after that is anyone's guess. We'll be checking back daily on that. So taking a look at the day to day, you can see the thunderstorm potential European again, like some similar areas, perhaps a little bit further south there across some of the southern Sierra Nevada. And then we go in towards Thursday. You can see we've got this across Nevada, Las Vegas. You're looking out here towards St. George and Utah and some of the desert areas. It could get a thunderstorm there as we go on through the day Thursday. And there it goes on Friday. It starts to move off to the east a little bit there, but still including some portions of extreme southeast California. Then we go into Saturday. You can see it kicking off to the east by that time frame. We're not going to worry about next week just yet. And look at it, total snow cachere ratio in inches. You can see how it kind of backed off on some of the totals here for some of the Sierra Nevada. But again, hopefully this will bring some beneficial precipitation to you know some of the Colorado River areas there out there because that does feed into portions of California and some of the higher terrain in Arizona and Mexico can use that snowfall as always. If we look at total precipitation in inches, this is the European as of last night. And again, some of the higher uh, terrain could get a 
some decent amounts there. But again, across the Los Angeles, San Diego Basin, you're looking at a few hundreds of an inch of rain. Nothing too crazy. No big flooding event. Uh, statewide snowpack here. Uh, we're just we're below the mean here for a couple of these areas. You can see central region and statewide snowpack are below normal. We're starting to reach up, reach that stage where we're going through the melt off. And uh, previous water year is that gray line. So we are behind that right now. But again, similar time with the melt off there. Not doing it too bad though. We're just a little bit below normal statewide. And you can kind of see that if we look off towards Arizona and New Mexico, some of these areas are not doing too hot up towards Utah as far as the snow water equivalent is concerned. And again, kind of that mixed bag across California ending up somewhere pretty close to average. Now taking a look at this, this is the artificial intelligence 15 day precipitation anomaly. So kind of normal uh, here across some of the Southeast California and Arizona, got that a little bit above normal signal there, but you see central and Northern California, even down towards Southern California has that below normal signal as we go on in towards uh, the early portion of May or the very end of April there for the next 15 days. Maybe that'll change. We'll check back daily on that. And if we take a look at the artificial intelligence, the showers and that frontal system the next few days, we scroll off in towards next week, and the most I can find here <clears throat> is a few showers there across the Sierra Nevada at best right now. We don't have a big storm system right now in our sights as we go on into the extended forecast. So what we're watching right now, of course, is this polar lobe dropping down across some of the inner mountain west. Again, I've been training a little bit further east, as I mentioned a few times already. So six to 10 day uh, temperature outlook. Uh, this was issued yesterday, kind of mixed bag here for California. There we go with the below normal signal there as we go through the six to 10 day for a lot of the west coast. And then we go to this mixed bag here for California, 8 to 14 day temperature outlook. We'll be visiting that daily though as well in the near normal for much of the region. Um, but yeah, what else? Uh, click like and subscribe. That's all I got for you guys today. Stay safe out there if you're across the higher terrain. Watch out for those thunderstorm potential across the higher terrain as well. And yeah, what else? I will talk to you guys tomorrow.